All right, here we go. So again, we're going to go down and uh, do the even. And again, um, it should be very simple. All right, it should be very simple. And then what I'm going to do is I will have uh, you do the odds tonight. And if you're interested in double checking your work, the video is already posted. All right. So it is very simple, like somebody already has mentioned. All right. First thing I want to do is I want to look at 11 over 3b cubed minus 2 over 3b cubed. And the main thing I want you to recognize is that we already have a what? That we already have a common denominator. So when you have a common denominator, all right, all you have to do is add or subtract the numerators. So in this case, it is just what? Yeah, we would say that it is um, equal to 9 over 3b cubed. Then you will use your skills from last week and you reduce the fraction into what? 3, 3 over b cubed. 3 over b cubed. All right. Anybody have any questions? All right. So now again, we're checking number four. All right. Again, I'm, I'm not uh, kidding. It's really this simple. Again, because we have common denominators, we can just uh, add or subtract the numerators. So in this case, the answer would just be 3 over 5x plus 3. Very easy. Now they start trying to get a little bit trickier. All right. So now when you're adding 7w plus 21 over w plus 3, you end up just adding them, correct? So it would be 7w. All right. Now what I was trying to say is that it's not that it's harder, but you still have to use your skills from last week. All right. So you have to try to see if you can factor and reduce. All right. So I can factor out a what? You can factor out a 7, and you end up with w plus 3, right? And then what can I do to the w plus 3s? Cross them out. So I have my answer is just what? 7. seven. All right. Any questions with that? Any questions? All right, so now let's look at number 8. Again, we have a common denominator, so I would just write... 4x minus 12, and then the numerator becomes what? x squared minus 9. Everybody agree? And now you factor both of them. That is correct. So x squared minus 9 factors to x plus 3, x minus 3, the denominator. All right. Any issues? And now, of course, we're going to go ahead and cancel out x minus 3s. So my final answer, x plus 3 over 4. Anybody have any issues? Very good? Yeah. All right, I told you, it's pretty simple. <coughs> All right. Now for number 10. All right, for number 10, the numerator becomes... 3 minus 6. What? 4B minus 24. 4B minus 24 over what? And then, of course, agree. And then what are we thinking? And so your final answer is what? 4. Four. Okay, now everybody put a little star by number 12 because this is where people have a little bit of trouble. All right. First one that might give you a little bit of trouble if you're not paying attention. All right, what causes the problem is the subtraction sign, believe it or not. Oh, I didn't see that. All right. Now, the reason why it causes a problem is because kids read that as minus 3x minus 2. But in fact, you have to distribute the negative. So kind of take a look what I'm doing plus, and then I circle it. The reason why I circle is because I try to remind myself that I've, distribu I've distributed the negative or I've changed that sign. 
All right, so when I distribute, I come over here and I make this a negative 3x, then I circle it, and I make that a positive. All right, the reason why I do that is because that just reminds myself that I've changed the signs. Everybody good with that? Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's only the numerator. And the reason that's a pretty good question is because, look, it's if I do in the numerator and the denominator, then it was originally what? Plus. You would be on that, right? So you're just distributing the negative to the numerator. You could distribute it to the denominator, but then that would change the denominators. And we don't want to do that. All right, so finally we end up with what? 2x. Do we agree 2x minus 10? over x squared minus 8x plus 15, right? Yep. And now we're going to check to see if it factors. So I factor out a 1 on the top. Right, and on the bottom I bet you there's a what? Yep, x minus 5, which forces it to be x minus 3. All right, and now what happens to the x minus 5s? They definitely cancel. So your final answer is 2 over x minus 3. Is everybody okay with that? Everybody good? All right. All right. Now, again, for the next couple now, exactly correct. We're trying to find a common denominator. Now, like I said, those guys who are good with fractions, this is not a difficult task. But listen how I'm explaining it now. I want you to look at that as if it were 4 fifths minus 3 fourths. So if I said what would be the common denominator, everybody would say that's obviously what? 20. 20. Okay, so now you understand what I'm doing here. All right, so there's a 20 here and a 20 here. Now, obviously, there's a variable involved, and it's W. All right, do we have the same number of W's? in the denominator? Yes, no. yes, yes, we do. So they stay the same. So they stay the same. You don't have to change them. So the common denominator is just 20W. All right. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to look and say, well, what did I do to the fraction to change it to 20W? What did I do to the denominator? I multiplied it by 4. So that means I have to multiply the top by 4. And then that would be 16. All right. Now, same thing for the second fraction. You would say, what did I do to 4 to make it 20? And we multiplied it by 5. All right. So now you can see how 3 times 5 is 15. Now, again, I hopefully you feel like that's pretty simple. All right. Hopefully you feel like that's pretty simple. So we can say 16 minus 15 is just what? 1 over 20W. 1 over 20W. Does anybody have any questions with that? Again, a little bit harder. All right, a little bit harder. All right, now 16 is a nice problem because the number is just a 1. Does everybody agree? All right? So again, what I want you to do is put equals, and we're going to try to find the common denominator. Now, all right? What you're trying to do to get the same denominator is figure out what do I need to multiply the fractions by to get the same denominator. All right, can anybody tell me what the common denominator is? Yes, yeah, so that should be pretty obvious, right? Yeah. You need the denominator to be p squared. And normally what we say when there's just a variable involved, we say it's whatever the largest exponent is. All right, is everybody with me? All right, so the first fraction I had to multiply by what? I multiplied by, that's okay, P over P. Any issues with that? And so the numerator becomes what? 3P. 3P. Now, did I have to multiply the second fraction by anything? No. No. So it's just left as what? So my answer is just what? 3P minus 7 over P squared. Now, what do people try to accidentally do now? They try to reduce the P's. But it's bounded by, by subtraction. Bounded by addition and subtraction, you cannot reduce. All right? So you leave it alone. You leave it alone. All right? Anybody care? 
or anybody have any thoughts? All right, here we go. Next. All right. Now, in this particular case, the common denominator is? X plus Y. Yay, very good, guys. All right. So the common denominator is X, Y. So again, just take your time. All right. And now you're saying, what am I multiplying the first fraction by? Y. So I want you to put Y over Y. And so that just becomes 3Y. Beautiful. All right. The second fraction I multiply by? X. Exactly. X over X. So that becomes 3X. All right. And so again, now we combine terms. Now, of course, you can put 3Y plus 3X, but mathematically, you turn right in alphabetical order. All right, so it's easier just to go ahead and say what? 3x plus 3y over what? xy. Now, and again, here's a time where people try to reduce the fraction. All right, again, don't try to reduce the fraction. All right, the point is you're putting the fraction together. If it's bounded by addition and subtraction, you cannot reduce it. All right, you cannot reduce that. All right, bounded by addition and subtraction. All right. So now let's think about question 20 here. Okay, what? Shh, I'm listening. Yes, you could actually factor the top. Very good. So if we wanted to, we could write that as 3 times x plus y over xy. But does that really help me at all? No. No. So listen, that's a good answer to leave it in. All right, but I just looked at it automatically. I should have said that and said, well, factoring out the 3 is not going to help. Do you agree with that? Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions? But it looks fancier. It looks fancier, yes. All right. So here we go again now, guys. Look carefully, please. All right. Now, again, this is just a combination of everything now. So the common denominator would just be what? 10x cubed. 10x cubed. Anybody have any objections to that? 10x cubed. So let's go ahead and put down 10x cubed. And you put 10x cubed. All right. And now you look at the first one and say, what did I do to the first fraction? Multiply by 2. Yep. All you did was multiply it by 2. So that becomes 8. All right. Now on the second one, you had to multiply by what? By 5x. You with me on this? So I'm left with what? 8 minus 2. 8 minus 15. Do you have any issues? No, sir. All right, so now you're going to go ahead and combine those terms. So go ahead. Okay. 8 minus 15x over 10x cubed. Any questions with that? No. All right, so oh. let me look at question 22 and see how we're doing. There's something bad. All right, so here we go. Let me see if I can just show you a couple more and then we'll call it a day. All right, so again, here is where uh, we have somewhat of a situation where people get confused with the common denominator. A lot of people say the common denominator would be 2c plus 1. A lot of people say the common denominator would just be c plus 1. But I would like for you to look at it this way. This is its own number, and this right here is what? Its own number. So now I want to try to show you something. If I made this 4 over uh, 5 plus 5 over 6, notice, right, that because 6 is one more than 5, that has no bearing on what the common denominator is. Everybody understand what I'm trying to say? So eventually, or essentially what I'm trying to say is that the common denominator here is going to be, someone tell me. What is the common C denominator? C, C and C plus one. Exactly, thank you very much. The common denominator is C 
and c plus 1. C, no, it's not c squared plus 1. No, it is not. It would be c squared plus c. But we don't want to distribute anyway. We always want to leave it in factor form so we can uh, determine whether or not we can reduce it. So again, I'm just trying to tell you on this one. Does everybody see, oh, I see. how we are looking at them as individual quantities? So the common denominator is simply the product oh. of those two separate terms. All right? So now, all right, what did I do here? So I'm going to erase this just for a second so I can add something too. All right? So the first fraction, I would multiply by what? All right, so I've got to pay attention now because this is one a little bit harder. All right, so I'm going to multiply this by, I want you to put C plus 1 over C plus 1. And the second fraction, I just have to multiply by what? By C. So we're going to do C over C. All right, so now the numerator. So the numerator becomes what? 4C plus 4. Very good. 4C plus 4. All right, because you are distributing the 4. All right? And the second numerator just becomes what? The second numerator becomes 3C. Come on, come on. We're almost done. So now when we add them together, I end up with what? 7C plus 4 over 3. Well, because I'm going to combine terms on the top. Okay. And not on the bottom. Okay, because I wasn't sure if we were going to, like, cross out. No, we're not. Okay. Okay. Now, the last thing you're going to do is you look at the C. Okay. Okay, listen now. All right, like I said, I just have a little bit more to go. All right, we've got too much going on. Just let me get through one more problem. All right, this right here now, the numerator, all right, you always are trying to check to see if you can factor and reduce. All right, that's why I left the denominator in factored form, and I'm looking to simplify the numerator, so I have to multiply so I can combine terms. That's what makes it a little bit trickier. Then the last part is just simply look at that and say, can I factor 7C plus 4? And the answer is what? No. no. So that is the final answer. Okay. That is the final answer. All right? So now, last one. All right? So we're going to put equals. And let's see who is listening. The common denominator would just be. Y minus 4 y plus Exactly correct. The common denominator is the product of the denominators. All right, so the common denominator is y minus 1 times y plus 3. y minus 1 times y plus 3. All right, now all you're doing is you're looking at the first fraction and saying, what did I do to get to the common denominator? And that would be 2. So again, you're going to multiply by y plus 3. All right, hold on, hold on. Just try to stay with me, not a step ahead of me. All right, so we're going to multiply by y plus 3. And then you're going to multiply the second fraction by y minus, one. y minus 1. And that's how we got the common denominator. Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and distribute. So when we distribute, you end up with 4y plus 12. And then 2y minus 2. Okay? That's what you're doing. All right, now you're combining like terms, which would be 6y, 6y plus 10 over y minus 1 times y plus 3. Now, again, the only way we could reduce is if it was through multiplication. So I'm looking at the top saying, I can factor out a what? A 2 in the top. It's not going to help. So again, in my opinion, it's not necessary to factor out the 2. But if you factor out the 2, 
uh, sometimes you make a mistake if you don't because it's not as obvious. Yeah. So if you left it as 2 times 3y plus 5 over y minus 1 times y plus 3, we'd be in good shape. Of course, okay. it's the same. All right. But uh, what I was trying to tell you was you have to be careful because sometimes a factor is hidden. Amelia, you hear me? Right. So it's good that you notice that. Try to factor it because it might cancel. If it doesn't cancel, it's no big deal. If you can look at it and say, well, obviously that's not going to cancel. That's what I actually want. All right. So again, your job tonight is to go over to the other side and do the odds up to problem uh, 23. Yes. All right, to the odds. Now look, I, I understand. Here, here's what I'm saying. I, I want to tell you something because we're kind of finished. All right, and I'm asking you to do the what? To do the odds. And those of you guys, as soon as you get done, find something else to work on. All right, listen. I've already turned a couple iPads off. All right, you're not supposed to be doing YouTube. You're not supposed to be doing um, anything except academic stuff on your iPads. And I have not been doing a very, very good job and monitoring that, and some of the teachers are a little mad. All right, I'm not a very good babysitter. All right, but, right, do what you're supposed to be doing. Get your work done, and then I don't have anything to worry about. All right, but if you get your work done, you should be doing something else academic, so you don't have as much homework, so then you can go home and look at YouTube all you want. All right, but you're not supposed to be looking at YouTube in school. All right, unless it's for specifically academic information. All right, and I don't want to be turning off your iPads because I want you to use them. All right, so please get to work and get finished.